Okay, you're ready. Thank you. Uh, the legislation committee for November the 2nd, 2021 be called to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Davis. Alderman Vicoro. Present. Alderman Coder. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Present. Alderman Martin. Present. Alderman Cole. I'm sorry. Alderman Navarro. Present. Alderman Middlebrook. Present. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Here. Chairman Vollmer. President Reed. Here. Nine present. You have quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Okay, so tonight we will be discussing Board Bill 101, and this is a public hearing to hear from the public. We will not be doing official business on approval of the minutes. We will not be voting on the board bill. What we want to do is hear from the public. We do have President Reed here that will kind of tee the public up on what the process has been like, what our objectives are, and we want to hear from as many people as public as possible. Now, I do have four people from the public sign up to speak. And I will have to say, starting out, that I'm very disappointed with all the transparency that we're trying to uh, exhibit, that we wouldn't have more people here to speak on this important issue. This is a historic moment for the Board of Aldermen as it relates to redistricting. It has never happened before. Redistricting has always been done behind the scenes with committee members of the legislation committee with the Board of Aldermen and Aldermen have gathered together to decide if they want to support the map or not. But because we're going to be reduced to 14 members of the Board of Aldermen, the president, the chairman of the legislation committee felt it was very important that we be as transparent as possible in this process and that we actually hear from members of the public. So. That is what we plan to do. We're having this hearing tonight. We will have another hearing at six o'clock tomorrow to hear from the public. I've heard from numerous colleagues that have been out knocking on doors, sending emails out to people to inform them about this process. And I just wanna say I'm disappointed that only four people have signed up. I'm hoping tomorrow I will be chairing as well tomorrow unless um, the chairman of the legislative committee can be available. And I'm hoping we get way more people to participate in this process. At the end of the day, um, we have what we have. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, turn it over to the president of Board of Aldermen to kind of walk the public through this process. Uh, some of us have heard his bill before. Um, I just want to say again, as a member of this committee and a member that's been down here 18 years, this is phenomenal. I mean, if you want to talk about transparency, you want to talk about public input, um, it, this has never been done before. And um, I'm hoping that we get more engagement from the community. We definitely want to engage our colleagues. There will be not one member of the Board of Autumn that is absolutely happy with however the map may be drawn. There will not be one member of the public that will be happy, in, in, in my mind, about how the map is drawn. Um, this map has been created, you know, in, in my mind by the individual who decided that they want to reduce the Board of Aldermen from 28 to 14. If it had remained 28, um, it, we probably wouldn't be, I, honestly, we wouldn't be going through this process because 28 Aldermen would have figured out if they want to remain Aldermen, how we can massage the boundaries in a way that people can remain at the Board of Aldermen. But now we have 28. So it's almost like we're starting over from scratch when the city of St. Louis has been created. So with that being said, uh, President Reed, I will yield to you to talk about Board Bill 101 and then open it up to the public. Right, I just wanna thank uh, all the members of the public that, um, that signed up and the ones that are here just watching tonight. Um, and also members of the committee for all the work that you've put in thus far. You know, we're still a long way from the finish line in terms of um, uh, 
the lifespan of a piece of legislation, right? Um, so we have a lot of work ahead of us to do. Um, but thus far, I just have been so pleased with the um, just constructive input from the members of the board. Uh, there's still uh, two additional members that I'm going to be reaching out to tomorrow uh, to you know, get some more information from them. And then we're gonna begin that second round where we begin the refinement. And as you all remember um, on some of the very densely populated areas down around Dutchtown and some of those areas, um, we uh, left a variance uh, inflated. So we're gonna have to really work uh, with that community and uh, members of the board and, and the neighbor neighborhood organizations there to really, uh, you know, figure out how we uh, begin to um, uh, merge that population into various different areas so that we have a, uh, a clean, concise map at the end of it. Uh, and tonight's meeting is, my understanding is, uh, public testimony. And for some of the newer members, uh, what that means is that we, this is, this meeting would be just us hearing from the public is not one where we engage in debate and, and things of that nature, but it's where we hear from the public. Um, and, you know, to the members of the public, our, our schedule is listed on the website. We've created a blog, not a blog, excuse me, a portal and a website just for this process so that you can go there and you get information about um, you know, the current, current status. Whenever we come up with uh, new revisions of, of this working draft, um, we will label, label it so the next one would be working draft two and so on and so forth until we get to a final, uh, final draft map. And all of those iterations and those changes will be posted up there as soon as there's agreement uh, from, uh, from all of the parties involved at the board uh, that it's time to post yet another draft and we'll continue to, um, continue to put that information out uh, as close to real time as possible. Um, also her, you know, you know, some discussion uh, the the post dispatch had uh, I had uh, printed an error um, about the data that was used to draw the map. All right, so we use the census data that's provided directly from the Census Bureau um, and to draw our map. So when we look at it, we use the total population. So if we're looking, uh, I think the question was what data that we look at when we were talking about, uh, you know, um, uh, minority wars, uh, that we use the total population that's provided from the census. That's the legal uh, piece that we can look at. Um, I know some people would say, well, there are other people that live there that did not want to be counted in the census. There's nothing we could do about that. We can't really count them. And we have, a, we can only count them based on what the Census Bureau what was reported to the Census Bureau and came back to the city and that's documented. So that's what we're using. Uh, but again, thanks to everybody and thanks to the folks who, uh, who are here watching and to the ones that will be speaking tonight. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, with that, we will go through um, the list of four people, but if I see there are people who have signed in, I would welcome an opportunity to hear from the people of the public if they raise their hand, if they have signed in. Um, we did post a public notice of how people can sign in. Uh, it's my understanding that maybe more people would like to speak that for, under, for some reason didn't understand how the process works. Uh, and if I can identify some of those people, I will give them an opportunity to speak, um, which would make me feel better, actually, because uh, four people with public input uh, on such a serious topic is um, pretty small. So we will open up for input and we have right now signed up officially. 
No speakers are registered for it. No speakers are registered against it. We have four speakers registered in opposition. The first speaker I will call is Wiley, and please forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong. Charge to the head, not the heart. No malice intent. Uh, Cybert. Is there a... Alderman Boyd, yes, I'm here. Okay, so is did I pronounce your last name right? Close, Seward, and no problem, it happens all the time. Seward, okay. <laughs> no so Mr. Seward, um, with our new rules, I must swear you in. And after I swear you in, I want you to again state your name and what hundred block you live in, uh, in the city, and then you move into your testimony. So Mr. Wally C. Seward, right? Seward. I'm sorry, I just said Seward. <laughs> no worries. C word, do you um, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is true? Nothing but the truth and the truth, so help you. Absolutely. All right, you may proceed. State your name, state your 100 block that you live in and the city. Great, um, name's Wally Seward, live in the 2800 block of Louisiana in the sixth ward. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak tonight. Um, so I want to say that if you have a relatively few number of folks uh, signed up to register tonight, I just want to make sure uh, that you know that it's not because of a lack of interest out in the community. I can guarantee you that based on the folks that I've been hearing from. I am guessing that there is quite a bit of confusion about this process in general, uh, about what it's looked like, because uh, it's easy to see what's happening from the inside, from where you all are sitting, from us out here trying to get information. It's been very, very difficult to understand what's happening inside of this process. The good news is that if you want to do good community engagement, you are not alone. There are a lot of experts in this city that will help you do uh, community engagement and make sure that uh, giving testimony is something that's accessible to everybody. So I, I would encourage you to avail yourselves of those uh, experts in the community. So um, I want to acknowledge, first of all, uh, and by the way, do I? what's my time limit? Are we... You have three minutes, and actually minutes. I started late, so you have a generous right. amount of time. You had All two right. minutes and 35 seconds. All right, very good. Um, first of all, I want to I want to uh, acknowledge that redistricting is hard, and no matter how you draw those maps, you're going to have someone angry at you. Um, I'd like to suggest that you needn't have done this, that a, an independent commission could have done this. Uh, we may get that in the future. Uh, but for the moment, it is in your hands. Um, so I want to just bring up a couple of points. Number one, early on in this process, if I remember correctly, there were conversations of two subcommittees that were going to be doing work on this process, one in North and Central and one on South and Central. Those committees were going to be doing a lot of the work. Um, have those committees ever met? Is there any record of their meeting? Is there any record of their discussions? Uh, what, what happened with that part of the process. Um, also, the public comments that are coming through on the portal, I am very much hoping that those will be available to the public to see as well. Uh, I haven't seen that happen uh, yet. I'm hoping that happens uh, soon in the future. The, fi the final point that I, that I will probably make is I appreciate that as legislators who are used to doing things a certain way, the process here feels radically community engaged. I want to say that from the community end, it does not feel that way. Just as a, for instance, um, the confusion about voting age population or total population has been rampant in the community for the last day and there's, there's been no clarity on it. I'm glad to hear uh, President Reed mention that it is total population that these districts are based on. Uh, very, very glad, to, very, very glad to hear that. Um, and so, yeah, I really, really want to just emphasize the degree to which it may feel like you're doing an open and public process, it doesn't feel like that from the outside yet. Um, and would really encourage you uh, to work a little more to make seconds. it available. Uh, and you know what? I will stop there and I will yield my time. And I certainly appreciate you um, taking your time out. Um, next on the list is um, Sarah Levin. Hi. 
Um, so I'm going to jump okay, in. Okay, Miss Levin, hold up. Hold oh, up. I forgot. Sorry. I have to forgot. swear you in. Do you <laughs> promise that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Number? Do you promise, swear in or firm, that it's the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right. So what I need you to do is, again, state your name for the record in the 100, the 100 block that you live in, in the city, and then you may proceed. Your three minutes start after that. Great. Uh, three minutes is short. Uh, so my name is Sarah Levin. I live in the 2800 block of Magnolia, and I live in St. Louis City. Right. And I have been a resident of Fox Park for 14 years, uh, served six years on our neighborhood association board in various capacities, completed our neighborhood leadership academy, the St. Louis Citizens Police Academy, served on the DeSales Community Board of uh, Advisory Board, and participated in SLACO's Neighborhoods United for Change. I have founded a nonprofit in youth sports in the city of St. Louis, which I apologize if you hear background noise, I'm calling from there. Um, and I work in South City at Anheuser-Busch during the day. And all of this is to say that I am deeply invested in our neighborhoods and their success. And I'm a very proud resident of St. Louis City. So firstly, I wanna say shame on the Board of Aldermen for waiting nine years to start this process. Hmm. You wasted time trying to get the issue re-voted on when you could have been planning better. And Alderman Boyd, I'm gonna tell you that if you are disappointed in the community for showing up, the community is disappointed that we only found out about these meetings five days ago. And I only found out about it because I'm involved. So as far as transparency goes, the community just doesn't know about it yet. So please don't chastise the community for not showing up. But now to the point for which I'm speaking tonight, we do not have, I want to make a point that we, firstly, we don't have city services. We have a city that provides ward services. And splitting up our neighborhoods amongst different wards only makes that fact all the more evident. For example, Fox Park, where I live, is represented by two aldermen, one that has just one street in our neighborhood. The sixth ward alderman, for which I live in, uh, represents nine different neighborhoods and none of them in her entire, in the entirety. Tower Grove East is represented by four aldermen. The neighborhood system in St. Louis is stronger than ever with communities forming new boards and seeing new leadership. When you break up those neighborhoods, it results resulting in multiple representatives. You're slowing down communication. You're hurting the alderman's ability to do the best job they can representing the neighborhoods. Our aldermen are our key representatives and often the only way to get city services. By redistricting with neighborhood boundaries in mind, avoiding breaking up neighborhoods as best that you can, you make our communities stronger. We need to strengthen our aldermen's ability to help better, to help better represent their communities and get much needed services to them. I urge you not to break up neighborhoods where you can. I know that it's a difficult process, but nine different neighborhoods for one, one alderman is 15 seconds. So please don't spread our aldermen so thin. If they're our best representatives and often the only way we get anything done. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Levin. Uh, let, let, me, let me say this. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to President Reed to see if there's somebody who can uh, maybe Tom it can come back and really talk about the process again because uh, all of our constituents are not engaged all at the same time. Um, I want people to first of all stop saying that uh, city services are more specific or even insinuating that it's the alderman that takes care of city services. That is the mayor. People elect the mayor of the city of St. Louis. The mayor controls all the staff that perform city services. It's not the alderman. And I want to be very clear with that. But Ms. Levin, one thing that you did say that is very important that we have talked about over and over again is about how we want to keep neighborhoods intact. And I think you bring up a valid point for me to just kind of step back and the committee to step back and that we give an overview of overview again on what's taken into consideration 
as we design these maps. So I, I wanna appreciate and thank you so much for your, your comments, but I wanna correct people when they say things that's really not true because it's not the ultimate responsibility to get potholes filled and to provide city services. It is the mayor at the end of the day. So President Reed, I wanna go back to you on whether you want to um, give a good overview of what's taken into consideration as we look at forming these maps, or if you wanna you know, have a staff member, because that's critical, oh, that's could, important. No, because we've had this a couple of meetings before, if not three, but this is the first time we've actually advertised. The city have gone out of its way to advertise in the newspaper, to put on Twitter, Facebook, every place we can to engage people. And, and by no means, as, as the chair of this meeting tonight, I want to chastise anybody. My only comment was to suggest that with all that we have done to generate interest, I'm disappointed that we don't have more participation. But guess what? The good news is we're going to do this again tomorrow. So for people who feel like they may not have gotten a chance to get on tonight, and I will try to get to as many people as possible, because my understanding is there are people who allegedly said they signed up, but maybe they didn't sign up the right way. I want to try to get to them because that is important to me. And I think it's important to the city and it's important to this committee. But what's more important Mr. President, to me, is that people understand what the process really looks like. So if you wouldn't mind. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so a couple things. Uh, we drew this first draft map with a couple things in mind. The first thing is uh, working to try to keep neighborhoods together as, as much as possible. Uh, and the other thing is to keep our eye on Ultimately, one of the markers we have to meet is our federal requirement to, um, to uh, draw a map that does not disenfranchise minority populations. So that's what this, this map uh, is kind of the first stab at, at doing that. Uh, but one of the things that uh, people are, uh, are, are mixing the two things. And I think it's important to clarify that there are over 70 neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis. Over 79. 70, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So over 70 neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis. And you have 14 aldermen. So divide 70 and 14, you know you're going to have some aldermen with multiple, multiple neighborhoods in it. I mean, some of these aldermen may have ultimately when we're done more than 10 neighborhoods within their within their district because some neighborhood organizations some neighborhoods are very small and then you have these mega neighborhoods uh so one of the things that the um uh that um uh, miss sarah um, spoke about was um having multiple neighborhoods for some of these aldermen uh, would just be entirely too much work, but there's no way to get around that if you're reducing the number of members of the board while at the same time, uh, uh, you know, trying to keep neighborhoods together. But we cannot um, uh, jump over our federal requirement uh, to keep neighborhoods together and let that be the driving force because if the driving force is just to keep neighborhoods together, we'll end up in a situation where, um, where we will have uh, walked right into gerrymandering. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a tough thing, but I, you know, I'm glad at the progress we've made thus far, we still have more progress to make. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make sure that as we have this conversation tonight, that everything is in the right context and that people are not mixing apples and oranges. So thank you for the clarity. The next person up is uh, Sarah Phelps. Hi, can y'all hear me? We can. Thank you for joining us. So Ms. Phelps, do you affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help the guy? I do. Okay, so you want to again uh, state your name, state the 100 block that you live, the city that you live in, and then I will start three minutes after that. 
Okay, um, great. I'm going to put three minutes on my own timer so I can see it in front of me too. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Feltz. I use she, her pronouns. I live in the 4000 block of Arsenal Street in the 15th Ward. Um, thanks for uh, involving the public and hosting this, this public meeting. I do echo Wally that there are a lot more opportunities to engage the public, and I hope that this committee and the larger board will, will take those opportunities beyond um, this hearing tonight and the one tomorrow. Uh, I also echo um, Ms. Levin, who said, you know, she was disappointed that she found out about these only five days ago. Um, I share that disappointment. I appreciate this is a difficult job and you're not going to make everybody happy. Um, I do think that there is more that can be done to engage the public. Um, and I hope that, um, like, I appreciate the timeline is the end of the year. I also think that, um, you know, there's more ways to engage folks and I'm trying to engage folks in my ward uh, as well. Um, so I have some process concerns and then some outcome concerns um, and I'll try and stick to, to under my three minutes. Um, so I agree with Alderman Boyd when he began the hearing saying it's so important that this process is as transparent as possible. I think that's a big part of keeping people um, engaged and trusting in our government and believing, you know, that we can use, uh, that city services can make a difference to people. Um, I'm really glad that there's a dedicated webpage to this. So thank you for that. Um, and that there's the opportunity for both live meetings and um, people to give their input in writing, um, both through the, the portal online and um, pro by providing the address of the clerk online. So thank you um, for making that happen. Um, do you think that there's room for improvement, um, particularly with the, uh, the software that's being used? Um, my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that the software is only accessible to, to one person. Um, and my understanding that, that that's President Reed and his, his office's staff. Um, and I think, you know, this is 2021. Um, we can make sure that we're using a tool that more folks can use so that we can see uh, the map in detail and um, that alders and citizens um, can make maps ourselves um, and tinker with things to see how they work. Um, I also just logistically had an issue with um, reading the map that's provided. The lines were thick enough that they blocked out some streets. Um, and so I'd appreciate if there was a, a more, um, a map that was provided in greater detail. Um, and also hope that the input that was provided by the public is shared with everybody and not just the folks on this committee. Um, I also want to say I was really glad to hear that this ward map is based on total population and not just voting age population. Um, and uh, agree that we need to keep it that way. Um, Twenty seconds. And for, thank you. Um, for outcome concerns, uh, echoing I think what everybody said so far is I think it's really important to keep neighborhoods together and minimize splitting those up. Um, I know. I can't hear her. Miss Phelps, you you have we can't hear you anymore, Miss Phelps. Uh oh, okay. So if you can hear us, Miss Phelps, thank you for your testimony. We lost the last twenty seconds, I believe, of your testimony. But we will move on to Caroline Fan. Uh, thank you. Um... Okay. Thank you for making this meeting over Zoom and for caring about COVID precautions. My name is Caroline Fan. Okay, Ms. Fan, hold up, hold up, hold up. Sure. Again, thank you for your willingness to participate. Um, do you uh, promise or uh, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Girl Scout okay. founder also. And, and you signed up as a member of an organization. So again, for the record, just state your name state the organization that you're representing and your three minutes will start afterwards. Name is Caroline Fan. I am the president and founder of the Missouri Asian American Youth Foundation. I started this organization so that Asian American Pacific Islanders have a uh, comprehensive statewide voice around the census. As a matter of fact, I sat on and attended census complete count committees at the city, county, and state levels. So, 
um, redistricting is based on the census, right? For the census, we say that everyone counts, and that includes, uh, actually, so you know what, I'm going to have to fast forward parts of this, because thank you for addressing the VAP section. Um, so we visited churches, we visited temples, including Resurrection of Our Lord Catholic, with over 200 Vietnamese-speaking attendees. And so what the Census 2020 has found, data-wise, is that the city's AAPI population alone or in combination has actually increased 37% in the last 10 years. I use alone or in combination because that takes into account um, people who are multicultural, including uh, fellow Alderman Narayan, who is both the city's first AAPI Alder and of uh, Irish heritage. And, you know, the multicultural uh, population is really one of the fastest growing entities in America and in St. Louis. And that map does not account for a multicultural category. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that we all know is the history of erasure that St. Louis has had of Mills Creek, of Hop Alley. And so I had always heard that people kind of um, in our community had moved out and were disparate. But one of the things I was really fascinated to find by opening Dave's redistricting app is that I was able to create three wards with Asian American populations above 10%. And actually I was able to create a CWE ward with a population of 18% AAPIs, right? And so when we talk about minority representation, when we talk about St. Louis, I reject the sense of a binary that this whole conversation is happening in, frankly, right? Because, um, and we talk about outreach, right? But we don't talk about language access. We don't talk about outreach in multiple languages. And I am really curious to hear more about the process that happened to engage folks because the map came out yesterday, right? Something like 70 to 80% of people are visual learners. Um, and, you know, we only had, I think, five days of prep before this meeting. So, um, you know, the population here is changing, right? And I think it's fascinating because there are precincts where Asian Americans make up 20, even 30% of the total population. Um, 30 seconds. So um, you guys have an opportunity to really think about where the city is going, right? To capture where the city is in the future. One could carve out a ward that, you know, could theoretically elect a Bosnian uh, alder. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fan. I appreciate your, your comments. Um, that is all the official um, individuals we have signed up for public input. But again, it is my understanding that there are some people who may be on that would like to speak. Um, if they are there, if they wanna raise their hand, or if someone, uh, all the person knows who they are, all the woman Martin, is my understanding that you had several people who wanted to speak, but um, didn't get a chance to speak. I just to wanted to make sure that, I think people were confused. Um, our policy is a little different than other government entities. So I wanted to ensure that people um, weren't, or they at least had a chance to speak, um, even if they didn't go through the exact directions. Sure. And with, with such short notice, I'm not sure how we can get them elevated. As well, if they had shown up to them, let's be honest, if they'd shown up to a meeting at the city, before the pandemic at city hall, they would be allowed to speak. Exactly. We're having this meeting tonight, I think if residents, this, it's a misnomer to say that people just don't care and they didn't sign up. They had very short notice. I still don't know what exactly what the boundaries are in some of these maps. So I think it's only fair to let folks speak who have shown up for the meeting tonight. Uh, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not being disparaging. I'm not saying people didn't care. I'm just saying, I've seen a lot of emails from my colleagues. I've seen, you know, there's been ads in the paper. All I said was I was disappointed. I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm not saying people didn't, do what they were supposed to do. I'm just saying I was expecting a lot more people to sign up. That was just my little commentary, but it was not to be disparaged, but if, if people are on the edge to the point where whatever people say, folks want to take it in a negative light, then, I mean, I can't do anything about that, but I want to be as transparent as possible. And I'm sitting here right now. You keep bragging people, about being transparent. Let me just stop you there. 
We keep That's, bragging no, about no, being stop. transparent. No, At no, every no, meeting, no, we brag no, about no, being transparent. No, that no, is our no, job. No. It is our no. sworn duty. It is not a choice. We did not get elected to make a choice on whether or not we want to be transparent. We don't get to pick and choose. It is our job. So whether four people signed up or 450 people signed up, we have to be transparent. And You're people right. are here. I the citizens are here. And I think that we let them speak. Then where are they? Where are they? I'm asking if they're here. People I'm are in an attendees them. list and I think they would like to speak. But I don't Maybe know I'm who wrong. they are. All the, all the women, please don't chastise me. I'm trying to work with everybody. I want to be transparent. I want to, and I don't appreciate you going off the way you just went off because I'm willing to allow people, if they're an attendee and they need to be elevated to a piss, I'm willing to do that. But I'm not patting myself on the back and I reject the fact that you think that we think that we're doing such a great job being transparent. It's That's all we've not done fair. in these meetings is we keep patting ourselves that on the back and bragging not, no, about we're how not. That is, We don't need to brag about how transparent we are. Just let, I don't understand. You just said that they weren't signed up. They, we weren't going to let them speak. Are we going to let them speak or not? That was just my only question. I, that's not what I said. That's absolutely not what I said. I said, if there's someone out there that needs to be elevated to speak, they can speak. If you want to cause confusion, go right ahead. I will sit here and let you speak for the next 20 minutes about confusion. I said, I want to be transparent and that if people are uh, want to speak, and they're on if they're an attendee and they can be elevated, let's figure out how to allow them to speak. I don't if you can play the tape back. That is what I said. I, don't attack me. I'm trying to be transparent. I'm trying to let people speak. But you're attacking me let's for no good speak. reason. We just keep talking. Why don't we just let them speak? If they're on the attendees list, let's just let them speak. Excuse me. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I and you know what? I don't even know who's yeah, on I get the a point of order. You point know. of order. Uh, all the women from the 19th, you're right. Point of order. Uh, as I sit here and listen, the only crazy. thing I want to do is the people that you asked to raise their hands and the people that he asked uh, Alderwoman Martin to point out, please allow them to speak. Can I'll we please more move than, on? I'll be Thank more than you. happy. That's all I'm asking. How do we do it? I'm not trying to argue with the Alderwoman from the 11th. What I want so to be have, supportive. We have some I think, hands I think the clerk, I think the clerk, uh, hold on a second. I think, uh, uh, let's refer to the clerk. The clerk can work through them. Thank through you. That list. So, so that's what they're doing. They counted the number of people who've had right. their hands up. They're working on that. So just the, allow the process to take, take place, please. Right. Madam um, Clerk. Vice Chair Boy, what I can do, I can look and see those um, with their hand raised, and I can just move them over to the attendees list, or I'm sorry, to the panelist panelists list, and they'll be able to talk. Thank you. And in doing so, Madam Clerk, would you please call on those persons? Because I can't see them. Yes, sir, I will. Would, would you call on those people as the next piece to speak? Because um, I want people to be able to speak. I mean, we set this up as a public forum so that we can hear from the public. And if people didn't get the information correctly, let's correct it so that they can speak. I am not opposed to that. Matter of fact, I'm a little bit offended that it's being projected that we don't want people to speak. We want people, to, I want people to speak. So Madam Clerk, I'm gonna turn it over to you to facilitate and let us know who's next to speak because I want as many people who's as an attendee to speak. Yes, sir. Give me just a second. Let's see. Reverend Charles Norris. Reverend yes. Norris, if you're there, you're recognized to speak for three minutes. Uh, Reverend Norris, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, Reverend Norris, do you promise or affirm that um, the testimony you're about to give for truth, the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, so, and I have to be clear now. Uh, so if you're representing an organization, you need to, again, just state your name and the organization you're representing. If you're representing yourself, Please state your name in the 100 block that you live in the city that you live in. 
Okay. Uh, well, I'm representing both, um, representing the St. Louis Metropolitan Clergy Coalition, uh, of which I'm the president, and then as myself, as a citizen of the 6200 block of Rosebury uh, in the 28th Ward. Uh, the issues that I would like to bring up, uh, as we've heard about preserving neighborhoods, uh, it is a uh, of grave concern uh, that uh, not only do we uh, understand preserving neighborhoods, but the issue are the services that are in neighborhoods, uh, a more equitable distribution of those services. We uh, marginalize people uh, in the city of St. Louis are marginalized. So when we have these forums, uh, often they continue to be marginalized, not having the technology or not being able to get the information in the way that some people that have access to it do. So there are some natural inequalities that continue uh, to be uh, evident when we try to reach out to people. So uh, I, we really would like to see that, and as we look at the equitable distribution of services, uh, that it might be based upon the number of people in various uh, populated areas. Uh, I think that would be most important for us to do so that we might have a long-term and a short-term solution to addressing these inequalities that continue to plague us in our city because it doesn't matter how many all the persons we have, if we continue to have the services con concentrated so that a few have plenty and that the many have hardly anything at all. Those are my comments. Thank you Thank very you. much, sir. I appreciate your input. And the next speaker is Gordon. Gordon is our last name. If that's the only name, G-O-R-D-O-N. Is there a Gordon? Yes, Gordon Carlson. Okay, Mr. Carlson, can you please turn your video on for us, please? Um, all right. Okay, uh, Mr. Carlson, do you... Um, so I affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. So for the record, again, state your name, the hundred block that you live, the city, or if you're representing an organization, the organization. Gordon Carlson. I live in the 5600 block of Etzel. And I just heard about the meeting yesterday. And it was only at six o'clock that I actually got a link to get on. So I didn't think that the communication was very good, that probably a lot of other people didn't know about the possibility. Um, I don't have any apparatus that can expand the map. So I wanna ask a couple questions and clarify where the, um, the Eastern boundary of C, E and F, what street is that? Okay, Mr. Carson, we're just taking public comment at this point, and it's not a Q&A. Okay. Um, well, I think that um, there are interesting um, designs in this neighborhood, and it'd be very helpful to know how to get clarification on where the distinctions are between B and E and F and E. I looks like the Bolivar Place is included with other places north of Del Mar, and but um, it looks like it's hard to tell exactly from the map um, what streets are where, and so I don't know when and where there will be a map available that will be big enough to see what the streets actually are. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Carlson? No. Thank you. I've been knowing Mr. Carlson for probably 30 years. I certainly appreciate all the work that you do in our community. Thank you for participating tonight. The next, next. I'm sorry, Chairman. Madam Clerk. Uh, the next speaker is Marquise. Okay. 
Um, Mr. Marquise, mm -hmm. um, do you promise or affirm, swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, so again, state your name, state the 100 block you live in, the city, if you're representing the organization, the organization name. You have three um, minutes after. I live in the single digit blocks of Grand. Uh, my older person is uh, Marlene Davis. Uh, I, uh, what else did I answer all the questions there? 19th You board. did well, go okay. right ahead. Uh, my name is Marquise Govan, I'm representing myself. I just wanted to start off by saying that uh, developing a map uh, without public input um, first is kind of, uh, kind of goes against the entire narrative of transparency to me. There are plenty of other cities that have developed ways to uh, first engage with community and actually draw uh, maps with the community involved with that. Um, I just wanna say that we had nine years to draw a map. We had nine years to develop a process to draw a map. Um, and it seems as though we started this process five days ago, which is increased and which is very concerning to me. I also wanna say that putting out a map a day before um, and then holding a hearing after that also goes against the general narrative tra of transparency. Uh, no one can read uh, and, and look at that, just like Mr. Carlson uh, noted, uh, at this, look at this ward map and see exactly where certain lines are even drawn. What's interesting to me is that uh, demographers and map makers uh, uh, that I've seen particularly on Twitter and on Facebook who've tried to um, get down to see where these lines are, don't even know where they are, uh, which I find incredibly concerning. The other thing is, is that this map was developed with a, with a system apparently that only allows one user. Uh, and to me, that seems quite convenient for um, control for one person um, and not community input, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, there are plenty of other um, ways to create maps um, that would allow members of the community to draw them. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Vaughn um, actually referenced one of those um, earlier today, and that, that platform is particularly free. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, I do have certain concerns about the, the, the current map in terms of uh, older woman and Gracia being drawn in, um, in in what I believe is I, District I. I know um, Ward L is overpopulated. Um, and I also share um, Carolyn Fon's um, concerns about um, the inclusion of other minority, racial minorities in terms of Asian Americans and Latinos, which President Reed referenced as growing um, populations within his report. Thirty seconds. We, we, we can't we hear lost, you. We lost his voice. Thirty seconds. We can't hear you. Just to go in. Okay, he's having connection issues. Can you hear me now? You have eleven seconds. Um, and I think there would be far more community input had we had uh, prior notice. Um, and I, I wanted to thank you for allowing time. me to speak here. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time out your evening to be with us. Um, Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Hilliard Phillips. H-I-L-L-I-A-R-D. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Hilliard. It looks like I'm, I'm not able to move him over. Okay, can we come back to him yeah. after? Oh, he declined to be a panelist, so I guess he didn't want to speak. Okay. Or he or she, I'm sorry. Uh, Gina McClendon. Hi, um, I'm Gina McClendon. Okay, Ms. Uh, McClendon, hold, hold tight for me. Thank you for being with us. Um, do you promise, swear, or affirm that your testimony be the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, so uh -oh. what I want you to do for the record is, again, state your name, the 100 block that you live in the city, or if you are representing the organization, the organization's name. And then your time will start then. Okay. My name is Dr. Gina Gunn McClendon, and I live in the 5,000 block of Minerva in the 18th Ward. 
So um, I want to start out by echoing the sentiments of other people regarding your behavior, Chairman. I'm quite disappointed that we you've spent about 10 minutes talking about your disappointment and people not participating. I only found out about this on Sunday. And then to top it off, to, to throw the, the mayor into the conversation, um, I thought it was in poor taste because if I'm contacting city services and I can't get anywhere, I'm not calling the mayor's office. I'm gonna call my alderman and say, hey, I'm looking to have such and such done. So I, I thought that was in poor taste. And I, I really think you owe everybody an, an apology. Um, my comment is, um, is, is also echoing some of the other things that people said about the names of the street. You can see the map, it's very poorly drawn. You can't tell where the streets are. And I live in a very, very small corner of the 18th Ward. There are only three blocks on the um, north side of Page. And so it's very difficult to tell whether or not, where the, where the um, map is drawn. So I would appreciate it if you in the future would do that. The other thing I think should have happened is if we could have had a picture of the map as we were having this discussion. I think that would have been helpful as well. So in the future, I hope that you are able to do that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your comment. The next speaker is Maggie McFadden. Matthew McFadden, is that what you said? No, sir, that was Maggie, M-A-G-E. Oh, Ma Maggie McFadden, okay. Is Ms. McFadden available? Ms. McFadden? Okay. I, I can't see her from my screen. Uh, I see just popped up. Ms. McFadden, uh, can you start your video? I thought I did. Excuse me one second. Okay. There she is. Ms. McFadden, good evening. Um, do you affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, nothing but the truth, so happy God? I do. Okay. So if you're representing yourself, again, state your name, the 100 block you live in, or if you're supporting the organization, speaking on behalf of the organization, state the organization. You have three minutes afterwards. Go ahead. Maggie McFadden, I live in the 5300 block of Cope Brilliant in the 22nd Ward. I just wanted to say, first of all, we need to stop throwing shade on each other because that's part of our problem. We spend more time arguing with each other than we do in trying to resolve our problems and issues. Having said that, I think that a better job could have been done or should have been done of getting the information out. I just learned about it last week. Now, what I did is I took that information to my church and distributed it among people there. I think that had the board sent those um, flyers or other information out to more churches and community organizations, they would have gotten more participation. We have to take into effect that a lot of our citizens in the city are elderly and they don't have access, nor do they choose to access Twitter or Facebook. I, I use it for very specific purposes. I have one Facebook friend and that's my daughter, but we, we need to, to be, have better access to that map because I couldn't get it at all. So I have no idea what the proposed boundaries are. And it would be a lot more effective if we had an idea of what the proposed boundaries are. Now, I understand that everybody wants to keep neighborhoods together and neighborhoods are important, but adequate representation from the neighborhoods that are going to remain need to be, needs to be considered. We need to make sure that everybody has adequate res representation and has a voice in what goes on in the city. And with that, I'm done. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. McFadden. And as she said, she's a representative of the 22nd Ward. I certainly appreciate you coming out tonight and have a good evening. Uh, Madam Cook. The next speaker is Damien. Can you hear me? <coughs> Can you okay. hear me? 
Damien, we can see you. We can hear you. Uh, oh, I just, you just blanked off. Oh, there you go. You're back. Thank okay. you. Uh, Damien, uh, for the record, uh, state your, uh, we know it's Damien, so state your first and last name, the 100 block that you live in. If you represent the organization, that organization. Uh, but first and foremost, do you promise, uh, you affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. I do. My Please name proceed. Is Damian Johnson. I live in South City of the 20th Ward, and I am representing me at this time. And I just wanted to comment on um, looking at this map, which is not a very good map. And um, yes, I am one of these people to not only to hope to keep communities together. Uh, keep Cherokee together, but I'm also hoping to maybe use this map to improve representation. I do, I'm looking at uh, map F, and then I'm looking at the top one of map E, and I see, I looks to me that the only time where map E goes below um, south of the Del Mar line is at Del Mar and the Wallaber. If I I see um, a disc line that may represent a bike path that I used to ride on. Well, one thing what I was hoping on is merging such a beautiful community of Skinker Developer and North of Delma, where I know um, currently the 26th Ward uh, over by um, uh, just North of the neighborhood. You, I still know people there. Um, um, merge that where you can ride your bike down Porter Park and continue down um, past um, the Volibur into Forest Park area where we can actually um, merge um, um, people together um, in a small community and we can use these maps to unite people of different income, whether it be students, um, uh, students, longtime residents um, and different income. I don't see that in map uh, in district E and F. I see a division and I think um, this could change where uh, not only you can have a runoff of competitive older people, but we can use this map um, to improve the community. And I will probably, you'll see my email as I study it at a later date. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Carissa Gilman Hernandez. Hello, can you all hear me? We can, Ms. Hernandez, thank you for coming out tonight. Do you, um, Affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you guy. I do. Okay, for the record, again, state your full name, uh, the 100 block you live in, the city, or if you represent the organization, your name and the organization. Absolutely. My name is Carissa Gilman Hernandez. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I live in the 4500 block of the Lozen and serve as the 15th Ward Committee Woman. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, so I had to raise my hand to speak tonight because I didn't have fully formatted thoughts on this process because I saw the map yesterday. Um, it's a map I couldn't fully see because the lines were so thick. I couldn't actually get an idea of where a specific roads were and if those were actually the dividing lines. Um, beyond that, it was only available online. There was no printed version that was available to any residents who might not have access to a computer. Um, you all couldn't even have given us a weekend to look through. Um, I saw better, more um, usable maps created by people on Twitter than anything that came out of the Board of Aldermen. Um, I've been watching this process in other cities I've lived through, lived in, and it's been going much smoother elsewhere. So St. Louis, we have work to do. Um, beyond that, we aren't near the finish line, clearly. You all need a gobsmack more um, engagement around this. Um, you all could have brought in the committee people to start engaging people in our wards about what they wanted. You could have uh, 
worked with each alderman to ensure that there were town halls on this. We could have made them digital. We could have made them in person. There was lots of options. We have chosen to ignore all of those options. So now we are at a deadline point and you all are asking for our opinions on a map that we can't really see. Um, I would like to know what is going to happen in the near future to ensure that there's actual engagement. What are you all going to do that the next version of this map and with uh, one of the wards being 25% population up, I don't think the map that you gave us is actually a map that's usable. Um, I think the next map we're going to see is going to be vastly different. And so what are you all going to do to ensure that there's actual engagement around that? What are you all going to do to ensure that there's transparency, which apparently is a favorite word now? Um, and I'd like to know what you all are going to do to ensure that we're reaching residents who aren't on Twitter and who aren't on Facebook. Um, we're really missing a lot of voices in this conversation because this is on Zoom. Um, I know that there's a global pandemic, but there's also ways around that. Um, like I said, I don't have fully formed ideas because you didn't give us time to create fully formed ideas. And I hats off to all of my um, residents in the um, who've been on here tonight who have had better seconds um, because they clearly... Um, did more work on this than I um, had time for, and I commend that. And um, I look forward to speaking at the next iteration of this map. Thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Walter Bonner. Mr. Bard, are you gonna swear me in? I will. We just we, you just populated for us. Thank you for being here. Thank uh, you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I did. Okay, so we want you to again state your name, the 100 block you live, the city, or if you represent an organization, uh, your name and the organization. And after that, dual, you have three minutes. I'm kind of dual representation here. I'm representing myself. And my name is Walter A. Bonner. I live at the um, 26th Ward at 934 Maple Place in the 26th Ward. And I also am president-elect for the West End Neighbors Association uh, for 20, coming to 2022. Um, I have to echo what many of the people said in terms of the community engagement and communication. I also just recently learned about this process and this meeting, kind of disappointed. I think the community could have, we could have done a better job communicating uh, this process to our neighbors and throughout the community. But what I most want to recognize is because I live in the 26, I'm on the um, kind of in the central corridor area where we have uh, what's known as a phenomenon as a Del Mar divide. And my point is that I did not see where this map, this draft map made any attempt to break down or didn't, I, I won't say made any, I don't, I don't see where this map made enough attempt to break down and bridge north and south wards. And I would like to just put that, point that out to everyone. We know we have a divide in this city. We should do everything we can to bridge those north and south, but especially with what we call the Del Mar divide. And unfortunately, I don't believe I saw that in this, in this draft map. Thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate it. Thank okay, you. Okay, Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Tim Taylor. Mr. Taylor, do you uh, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay, so what want you to do is state your name, the 100 block you live, and the city. If you're representing the organization, state your name and organization. You have three minutes thereafter. My name is Quentin Spurlock, and I own a home in the 5400 block of Gilmore. I guess that's the 27th ward. I also own a home on the 60... Um, the 8600 block of Broadway and I've owned that home for five years and I don't know what ward that is. Um, I guess my time starts. I just want to talk a little bit about being transparent. Like I said, I've owned that home for five years. I just bought the home on Gilmore, not even two months ago. And I've talked to Mrs. Boyd, you know, consistent as far as being transparent, just like they said, as far as the map, if, if what the other guy said is true, I haven't done my due diligence, but if this has been going on for years, I've owned a property in the city for five years. My mom has owned one for even longer, but she's deaf. And I haven't 
any type of communication going out to me. I haven't received anything in the mail. I haven't had any of my neighbors tell me anything about any of this. So as far as transparent, I can't really say that that's going on. I also want to talk about age because I've noticed I don't I don't know if I'm being ignorant here because I haven't done my due diligence on a lot of things yet because I'm new to all the committee stuff. But I, all my friends, everybody that I know that owns a home that's under 30 in the city, like when I told them about the redistricting, like they head spun, you know, so it's I just feel like we get a lack of information. I don't have Facebook, Twitter. I'm not on social media. So if there's not a sign posted up somewhere in my neighborhood, if somebody's not calling me, interacting with me directly, I'm not going to get it. I'm not on social media. I don't I don't have anything to advertise on social media. So I'm not on there. I'm not following nobody. I'm not looking after nobody. So I expect those things to be in my community for me to find. And like I said, I've owned a home on Broadway for five years going on six. And I've never even talked to my alderman and there's vacant homes all up and down the street. So I just can't feel like we're being transparent if this has been going on for nine years and the map just got released recently. The other thing is, if we're talking about transparency, like I said, I got friends that are under 30 that Miss Boyd added me to a specific email list where I received this email where I was invited to this. I didn't get a time frame or anything like that until I received the email from her. Like I said, I have a house in the on Broadway, my other alderman hasn't contacted me at all. And I, I'm a little upset because I, I do things over there, like clean the alley. Like I cut grass over there of, of vacant properties next to mine. I call the forestry division. I do all those things. You know, I got trash cans added to certain alleys. And it's like, I've never heard from my alderman at all. So I, I can't believe that we're being transparent or we're even trying to reach out to younger people, the youth and letting them know. Cause I got friends that own property that's 21, 22, 23. And they never hear from their aldermans and I'm 30 a little seconds. Bit, so I'm yeah. just here to you guys know that I am going to be here. I am going to be listening to what people say. So I hope people are being transparent because it's a big portion of us. Like she was talking about, I, I can't be ignorant to say what she was talking about, but about the other, you know, biracial people, there's a lot of black people that aren't informed of what's going on in their community. And I feel like that that's not okay. So even with this redistricting, we have to inform all the people in the community, whether we're sending out flyers, posting stuff for people to see when they're going through. But we got to do a way better job of being transparent if that's what we're doing, because I can't you, believe I, I never. Yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate I just can't. your comments. I appreciate Thank you coming out. Stay engaged, sir. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm Madam going Clark. to it'll be transparent, so I'm going to be engaged. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Nate. That's just the first name, Nate. Nate, going twice. Nate, three times. Madam Clerk, please move forward. He's there, he's just not unmuted. I, I can't see him on my screen. Is it talking? Is it talking about me or somebody else? It, it was only that's the only name. It just said Nate. That's all. Yeah, they call Nate? me. They call me. They call is me. They're talking about me because I go by Nate, but I'm Nathan also. Is it Nate and STL? Is that right, Madam Clerk? Yes. Uh, we want to make sure we get yep, the right. That's me. That's, that's me. It. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so, sir, if you would state your name. And uh, matter of fact, state your name for the record so we make sure we're talking to the right person. What is your name, sir? Nathan Cromwell. Okay, Mr. Cromwell, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, so again, state your name, state the 100 block you live in. Uh, if you represent the organization, state your name and organization that you're speaking on behalf of. You have three minutes thereafter, sir. All right. My name is Nathan Cromwell. I live in the 2000 block of Melanfrey Street. I'm in the third ward. And I would like to thank Mr. Boyd and Mr. Reed for having me. Uh, my alderman, as you know, is Brandon Bosley. And he and Rasheen Aldridge told me about the map. And I disagree with the outline of A and D. I think St. Louis Place to be in D because A is too big. And one alderman is not going to be able to um, just do A. So I would like to see St. Louis Place and Old North and maybe Carr Square 
in in uh, D. Um, and a lot of neighbors I've talked to also agree with me. Um, I have made a um, my own marking on the map, and I sent it to my alderman. I sent it to James Page. I sent it to my friend um, Jamil Nasheed. Um, I sent it to Rasheed. Um, they all agree and they like it. And I would like to also get it to you, Mr. Boyd, which I sent it to your messenger. So you can look at it. Tell me what you think when you look at it. Um, and me and my family just want to make sure that we get represented and we don't get left behind and that all the neighbors in this area, no matter what their color, race, or creed, all get represented. All right. Well, we appreciate you. All Thank right, you so thanks. much. Uh -huh. And uh, continue to be engaged. Yep. Madam Clerk. The next speaker, Randy Barnes. Mr. Barnes. And I can only see, just for people who know, I can only see 12 people on the screen at one time without scrolling through. Uh, Mr. Barnes going twice. Mr. Barnes, do it, uh, Madam Clerk, do you see Mr. Barnes? I'm looking now, Chairman. Um, okay, we have to move on. Okay. Danielle Spradley. Ms. Danielle. One twice. Is it Spragley? Spradley, S P R A D L E Y. Danielle Spradley. Hi, I apologize. It just sent me the prompt, so that's why you couldn't hear me. Um, okay, Miss Spradley, uh, welcome. Um, mm -hmm. Do you affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, done by the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay, so what we want you to do is state your name for the record, the 100 block you live on, and the city. If you're representing an organization, state your name and the organization, and you will have three minutes thereafter. I am representing myself tonight. I am in the Ninth Ward. I'm in the 3300 block of Ohio Avenue. My older person is Mr. Gunther. I don't have testimony. I just have questions. I want to know as a community member, again, like the map was just released last night. Then there were confusions in the paper um, on statements on how the ward maps were drawn. Again, like everyone else, it's confusing. If I go to look at the map on the BOA website, I can't really tell how this is, how this process was done or break it down because the lines are so fat on on the ward maps. And so I also want to also understand community, the community outreach process so that we know that the entire community is being engaged. I'm someone who is highly politically involved and, and I'm on Twitter all day. But what about, in fact, too much? How do people that are not on Twitter, annoying, I'm sure all of you, as you know, and complain about us quite often, um, how do those people in the rest of the community get this information out? What outreach efforts are being made? And I'm more confused when we're talking about this being a public meeting and talking about transparency. Why are we being told we're not here to ask questions? We're here to testify. The whole point of me being here is to ask questions to understand how this process has been done. What are the ward lines and, and, and what was the methodology? That's what the public meeting should be for. And that is my my testimony, I guess, is if you're going to have public meetings, then actually let people ask questions and get answers, not you have to provide testimony on something you just have seen. And it's a complicated process. Even people that are highly politically involved and pay attention don't understand and get right. So we should be able to have a real public meeting where the community can really ask questions. And that's what I have to say. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time tonight and being engaged with us. Madam Clerk. Um, Ken Haggerty, H-A-G-G-E-R-T-Y. 
Ken is the first name. Mr. Good evening. Haggerty. Thank you so Good. much. Mr. Haggerty, thank you for joining us. Do you affirm or swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, nothing but the truth, so I have to God? I do. Okay, please state your name for the record, the 100 block you live on in the city, or if you're representing the organization, your name and the organization. You have three minutes there after, sir. Very good. Thank you so much to yourself and to the entire board of, board of aldermen. I am Ken Haggerty. I live on the 2800 block of Wyoming in St. Louis. Uh, and my comment is going to be very short just because I did want to share that I was able to put together a high definition version of the map. Uh, to the best of my abilities, of course. So if there are any errors, please let me know. But it is on Google Maps. Uh, so you can see it here. I'm just gonna put this up so you can see, you can zoom in. Uh, you can see where all the boundaries are. Uh, it even includes the neighborhood level census data. Uh, I didn't have access to the block by block level census data yet. Uh, so you can kind of see get an idea of where the populations are and where the borders are in this first proposal that was put together. Um, I had a lot of fun putting this together. Uh, and again, to access this map, it is available through the short link uh, bit.ly slash SCL redistricting one. So I will bring this onto the screen so everyone can see what that looks like. I'll make that text a little bit bigger. So if you just type that into your web browser, bit.ly slash S-T-L-R-E-D-I-S-T-R-I-C-T-I-N-G-1, that will take you directly to this comment, to this, uh, to this uh, map, and you can see all different layers on here. Uh, I just wanted to share that because I know the initial maps were a little hard to read. There's definitely some interesting borders going on, especially down here by Carondelet, where I guess the, the highway on ramps, they want to put that in District L for some reason over here. Uh, interesting kind of decision. Uh, but again, if there are any errors, please let me know. I'm happy to update it, but I just wanna make sure that everyone has access to this, especially since it has been uh, you know, a point noted by other speakers today that they wish they had the map available while we spoke. So that's all. Thank you so much to everyone. Good luck. This is a tough process. I'm really eager to see how it turns out. Thank you, Mr. Haggerty. If you don't mind, if you would put that link in the chat, that would be excellent. We appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, and it looks like I do have access to the chat now. I will put it there as soon as I turn my screen around. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your participation. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Dan Seisman. Dan. Hello. Okay. Mr. Seisman, welcome. Um, uh, Simon. You... Daniel, Daniel um, Simon is my full name. Simon, Mr. Simon, welcome. Uh, do you affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give the truth, the truth to help you got? I do. Okay. So we want to start off by you again affirming your whole name. 100 block you live in and the city or if you're representing the organization your full name and the organization you're representing and you have three minutes thereafter sir hi um i'm not representing any organization i'm a proud member of the uh um northampton neighborhood association i'm in uh, the 23rd ward and 5400 block um 5400 block of what sir uh, philozen thank you three, three um minutes. you know we you know, there's been a lot of talk about transparency tonight, and I just think that the people making the decisions um, of this map, um, certain things need to be disclosed by, uh, by them. Um, one, um, you know, this, this new map came out, and the chair who is not here tonight, um, Alderman Vollmer, uh, he's, he is the chair, and just so happens that he's also been mapped into a, a ward to where he's, he is the only uh, resident uh, alderman in that entire ward where other ones um, have, you know, four or three aldermen um, mapped in there. And, and some of the lines appear to be drawn just to cut certain alder folks, alder persons into the, uh, the ward so they could, uh, uh, you know, gerrymander some certain alder, alder people out. Um, if you take a closer look, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing is, is if anyone in making these decisions has, have received any um, taxpayer funded grants 
have used any taxpayer funded money for their own businesses. Um, I think that should be disclosed too, um, you know, for uh, transparency reasons. Um, the, the lack of, you know, um, notification to the citizens and um, people involved in this is, is, uh, is just a failure of, of, our, uh, of our legislative body. Um, I, I just can't believe that something this important is just being rushed. Um, you know, St. Louis is known as a um, mapping um, intelligence center, and we can't, we can't, and the people making decisions for our city can't put this together in a better format. I just feel like it's just been an utter failure to this point, and I, I truly, truly hope that um, it gets better and uh, we, we see a map that fully represents our city. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Seisman, for being engaged. Appreciate your comments, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Harry Wilson. Mr. Harry Wilson. Yes, I am here. All right. Mr. Wilson, welcome. As soon as we see your video, we will swear you in. All right. Well, I, I don't know why you can't see the video. We don't know either, sir. But um, as soon as we see your video, we will swear you in. Let me punch on it again and see if it comes up. I mean, I can say what I can say without the video. You will not be allowed to testify unless we see your video, sir. Oh. Well, let me try again. Oh, here. I see. There yeah, you now go. I'm, now I'm there. You, Mr. Wilson, you, you're online now. So, right. Mr. Wilson. Yes. You swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth done by the truth to help you guide. I do. Okay. So, there's two options. Representing yourself, please state your name, the 100 block you live on, and the city. If you're representing the organization, state your full name and the organization. You have three minutes thereafter, sir. My name is Harry Wilson. I live in the 4500 block of Pershing in the 28th Ward. My representative is Alderman Navarro. Um, I have two things to say. One, I want to thank the board, all of the board, including the president, for all the hard work they've done in pr producing this map. I'm sure it's not the final. I'm sure it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot of work. And if you want to compare it to same other nearby uh, institution, why not compare it to St. Louis County? They can't even agree on who's on the board. Uh, next on the issue of uh, inclusion and transparency, uh, I understand the complaints, but I might want to remind ourselves that uh, none other than the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, won't give anything to Congress and nobody seems to care. And the Republican leaders of the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives stand behind him and won't let anything go to the committee that's investigating January 6th. And nobody seems to care. So I think by comparison, this board of aldermen is doing a heck of a good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson. Appreciate your comments and being engaged tonight. Madam Clerk. The next speaker is Mr. Farrakhan Shagag. Okay, and, and Madam Clerk, let me interject real quick, just so that the next speaker will know that they're coming up, because uh, I know it's kind of hard to know who's next. Would you announce who the next speaker is after Mr. Shigai? We'll do. We have okay. one more person after that, and that person is Elaine Laura after Mr. Oh. Shigai. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Miss Elaine Laura, please be on standby. Mr. Shigai, um, you're ready. Good afternoon. Well, good evening, everyone. Okay. Oh, Mr. Chicago, yes, you have to turn your video on, sir. Oh. All right. Is it on now? Now you're on. So do you um, affirm or swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and the truth so help you God? I do. Okay. So we want you to state your name, uh, the 100 block you live on, and the city. If you're representing the organization, state your full name and the organization. You have three minutes thereafter, sir. For sure. Thank you, uh, Alderman. So Farrakhan. And you must have your video on during the testimony, sir. 
All right, can you still see me? No, we cannot. Okay, what about now? We cannot. Now we can. Oh, okay. So good evening, everyone. Uh, Farrakhan Shigog. I am representing um, a, a coalition of organizations, one included being the Federation of Block Units, which uh, represents block units and block leaders from all 79 neighborhoods uh, in the city of St. Louis. I'm also coming on behalf as the um, Senate independent uh, bipartisan commission set up by the state of Missouri as the commissioner for the first congressional district tasked with drawing state state Senate lines of the first congressional district in the city of St. Louis and St. Louis County. So I'm happy to be here today. And I just want to just urge um, that this that this committee um, strongly consider um, adding additional um, town halls. Um, where community input can be solicited and also where community uh, input and feedback can really be massaged. Um, as, a, as, a, as a commissioner that serves on the state Senate redistricting commission, um, I hear, uh, uh, we hear terms a lot um, in regards to transparency, in regards to equity, in regards to, to fairness. But all in all, I know that the task that this legislative body has is really, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it, it, it takes a unique person um, to really, really, really um, take on this task. And with that being said, um, I just think that it's really, 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 really important that, that everyone that gives testimony, and everyone that gives comment, that they be as specific as possible um, when they are describing what communities, what neighborhoods, what community interest needs to be kept together and so forth. Um, I do know that from my from my experience on the uh, state senate redistricting commission, that we hear a lot that communities deserve to be kept together. Uh, communities that have historical ties, communities that have economic ties, communities that have cultural ties, and even educational ties. Um, I would urge that this committee to to keep that um, at the forefront of your minds and also uh, keeping it keeping it to the forefront, uh, keeping this process um, at the forefront of the people. Uh, we should also be mindful that this process is a people's process, not a politician process. Um, this is a process that um, should 30 seconds time to empower and to equip residents um, of the city of St. Louis about this process. And I believe by having additional town hall meetings on this process, I believe that we have an even greater opportunity to keep empowering the residents of the city of St. Louis as it relates to the district. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shigai. Madam Clerk. I believe the last speaker is Elaine Laura. Hello. Hello, Ms. Laura. Thank you for joining us. Um, You're do you? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, not the truth, but the whole truth? No. So help you God. I do. Okay. So again, state your name if you represent it yourself. Just state your name and the 100 block you live on and the city. If you represent the organization, state your full name and the organization that you represent. And you will have three minutes thereafter, ma'am. Well, thank you. My name is Elaine Laura. I'm not representing anybody but myself and I live in the 4,400 block of Enright. And I just want to say that I am a relatively small uh, student of Dr. King, but his words judge, uh, judge me by my character has always meant quite a lot to me. And yesterday in the first uh, meeting, uh, I thought I heard too many people talking about uh, seven black wards and seven white wards. And I just want us to move closer to being judged by our character and not be afraid that we have wards that illustrate that we value diversity. And I must really compliment uh, Ms. Navario and her committee of, I know that 
the older woman, I can't remember her name, um, but I thought they did an excellent job comparing uh, other governing legislative bodies and showing their salary schedule and the amount of support that they had in completing their jobs. But I, and I thought I heard that there was a feeling that reducing to 14 wards might be undue labor and the Board of Alder people need support in serving the community. And I wondered, well, who's in charge of the stabilization officer? Because my first line of attack when I have a problem is to call the Citizen Service Bureau. And I think that they support the Board of Alder people. And then if I don't receive support from the Citizen Service Bureau, then I call the committee woman. And I must compliment her. Uh, Dwindlin Evans is an outstanding committee woman in the fourth ward, uh, held monthly meetings that I never missed. And 30 seconds. Think, and then after I called the committee woman, then I would go, uh, if needed, to the older person. But if we train the public to stable, uh, uh, citizen service bureau, stabilization officer, I think they supplement the board of older people yeah. and, and maybe 14 people might be able to do the job. Thank you so much, Ms. Laura, appreciate it. I think I remember you from another hearing and you always seem to be engaged in the community. So thank you for continuing to be engaged. We really always appreciate your comments. Oh, you're welcome. Madam I love Clark. meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Clark. Uh, Chairman Boyd, that is the end of the um, speakers list. Okay, so basically we are at the end of public input for tonight. Uh, we will have another session tomorrow. But let me say, uh, I want to have, I'll talk about uh, some takeaways, or at least a takeaway. Um, what I heard was um, some, maybe the information that we put out wasn't put out in a way that people fully understood. And so if we've erred in that, I'm going to lean on my colleagues to ensure that you know, we do the email blast, the social media blast to uh, inform people about the correct way to sign up so that we don't have the hiccup that we have. I want to appreciate uh, my colleague from the 11th board, although I feel the frustration and the pain, but there was no malice intent on trying to uh, stop anybody from talking. Uh, people that know me know I'm more than willing to be transparent and give people the right opportunities to um, voice their concerns uh, because public discourse is extremely important uh, if we wanna make our city a better and healthy city. So uh, some of the dialogue that I heard uh, was very enlightening. And again, this was about the public input. It was not about um, the members of the Board of Aldermen. These next two days is totally about input from the public. We will have an opportunity to engage each other. That is the chairman. I was charged with doing the public engagement for tonight and tomorrow night. So my duty is to ensure that I hear from the public. Um, we started off slow. And again, I want to apologize if anybody offended because I said that I was disappointed that we only had four people uh, sign up. But then as the conversation went on, I understood better why we didn't have a lot of people signed up, but guess what? We had an opportunity to correct that. And so we were able to elevate people who were at uh, participant status, uh, no attendee status to participant status. I was expecting to go to nine o'clock tonight. It's 737 according to my clock. And we are done with public input tonight. So uh, I am grateful. Uh, that we had an opportunity to allow as many people who uh, logged in as possible to participate. Uh, and again, um, 
we want to be as transparent as possible. And certainly transparency means different things to different people. And quite honestly, if we just really want to be honest, it's about whose agenda um, is being pushed as, we, as it relates to transparency. There's no intent to this be disparaging against each other as colleagues or the executive branch of government. Uh, because at the end of the day, this is the city of St. Louis and the people elected us to represent them at the end of the day. This is a historic process that we're engaged in with this. And this has never happened before. It's almost like creating a whole new city. And unfortunately, when we should have gotten the data in March or April, we didn't get it to September or October or so. And so that has really put us behind the eight ball. And the train is moving fast down the track because there is a deadline. And I know, you know I'm not the chairman of legislation, but if I was, I would have loved to have had three or four months to engage the public and have more dialogue. But that's not the case. I'm, I'm glad to hear the comment about St. Louis County. Um, I think we're moving at a pretty good pace compared to what other counties in the state of Missouri is doing. And um, I'm grateful again for the comment that was made uh, again from the old woman of the 11th Ward. I, I felt the frustration, I felt the pain. There was no ill will. Uh, the intent is to do this the right way, the best we can and not leave anybody out. Um, so I just want to say that as a statement before I close, uh, but I do want to recognize my colleague from the 19th because she has her hand up and I want to be respectful. So uh, all on from the 19th, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to ask if uh, we could take time um, because time is, is, is really what we've been talking about all night. And maybe we can come up with just a few uh, thoughts from each committee person, I'm sorry, so that we can be even more prepared tomorrow and or get information out um, to more citizens by tomorrow's uh, meeting. And so one of the things that I wanted to suggest is, um, I know it's uh, pretty easy to use contact us and if that would be possible to uh, get that out to as many people as possible by tomorrow. Uh, but that was my only comment. Uh, I did appreciate those who spoke and we had some very good ideas come out of this. Thank you. Okay, uh, very good point. Uh, and again, to, to make the process even better, I think it's a great idea if we did go to each committee member and just you know, what I'm asking is that if there is a way for us to inform the public a little better, then let's offer that. Uh, I want to be as constructive as possible. And please forgive me as I'm talking and I'm going to try to find the list of committee members so that I can call on people in order. And I am... Uh, I have it uh, readily available. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can you just call on my behalf, uh, Madam Clerk, you. please? So it's yourself, Alderman Davis, and then Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Vaccaro, you recognize? Yes, I. You know, I just. I mean, I've been listening to everything, and you know, we did. Uh, you know, the president of the board did do. I saw you on the news. You were on. Okay, Alan Macaro. I don't mean to cut you off and be disrespectful, but for the sake of time, I, 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 I don't want to get I'm into a saying, committee I, debate about anything. So no, if we can just the, offer what we can do in addition to what we've done. If, 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 I'll, I'll go back on TV. The president was already on TV. I'm just saying, you know, when, I'm not debating. I'm just saying I think we've done everything. But let's go back on TV, uh, see if we can do a press conference tomorrow. You know, uh, I would assume everybody's got a TV or a radio. Uh, you know, so I'm just saying, I, in my opinion, I think we've tried every different. So again, I'm not debating it, but I guess we can go back on TV and, and, and uh, tomorrow, I guess, the, the, we can do a press conference. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'm clerk. Alderman Calder.
Um, uh, 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 move on. Odd woman boy. I have no questions. I just wanted to thank the public that came out and they're very passionate about uh, their concerns and the questions that they did ask. And so I look forward to them, uh, people coming tomorrow. And I, and I really believe it'll be more people coming tomorrow. And so uh, as the chair of the committee tonight stated, we have a lot of work to do and it's a totally different process than it's ever been in the history of this city. And so we, not, we might not be getting all the points right, but we are trying as a legislative body to try to make sure that we're as fair as possible to our community. Thank you. All righty, Alderman Muhammad, I can pick it up now. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's Alderman hey, Muhammad. You. Okay, thank you, thank Alderman you. Muhammad. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I wanna thank the president because I think that he has done a phenomenal job in making sure that we get this information out to the public. I've seen him myself at several town hall meetings uh, in the past two weeks. Um, but I think we just have to continuously do community outreach and citizen engagement and keep doing exactly what we're doing. All right, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, I just want to clear up a something that I keep hearing that we've had nine years to create a map uh, and it's more like nine weeks. We did not get the census data from the federal government to the end of September. Uh, and that's what we're using to redraw our maps. I just wanna make sure that that is clear to the general public. Again, I wanna thank the president and his staff and I thank Charman uh, Vollmer and you, uh, Alderman Boyd for your leadership on this committee. I know it is a tough task. Uh, but again, we just have to keep doing constituent outreach. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Oldenburg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have much other than I want to thank all the speakers. This is the democratic process that uh, we're seeing in front of us. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for letting all those who didn't sign up or that showed up uh, the ability to speak tonight. Thank you. Um, Alderman Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for allowing uh, those folks who did not uh, sign up but showed up to speak, uh, like Alderman Oldenburg said. Um, I do think that we need to send um, emails uh, to the email addresses that the aldermen submitted um, with the neighborhood organizations. Um, not everything is correct on the, that the, not all the email addresses or contacts are updated um, on the city's list. I know we've had some turnover in my ward. So I wanna make sure those folks do um, get the official email from the Board of Aldermen. Um, I hope we post the 143 comments um, that have been submitted thus far, the written testimony. I think that's important. I also think it's important that we answer some questions. Um, it's really hard to, um, it's hard to testify on something that you're, when you are not sure, um, you know, what the qualifiers are, what the methodology was. And so I think it's fair game to answer questions. Um, we also need to make sure the folks that do sign up aren't receiving their emails after the committee um, meeting begins. I know that happened tonight, and I know that this is um, this is a uh, it's busy, um, and everyone's doing their best. And I think that uh, we do need to make sure, though, that people do get that information before the meeting. Um, and you know, maybe we need to consider consider waiving the sign up. Maybe we just let panelists speak. Like I said, pre pandemic, people who showed up. Um, were allowed to speak at the meetings. We did have a sign in list, but people were allowed to speak. We also need a legible map um, with street level views. Again, people just don't know where some of these lines are. I'm not really sure um, where some of the lines are by the map that's posted on our website. Um, and then I do hope that there will be another opportunity for the public to weigh in um, on what will be uh, the next draft and the final draft after that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Navarro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who showed up tonight, either to speak or to, to watch and to listen. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing those in attendance who hadn't signed up previously to speak. I, I agree with my colleagues. I think it's better just to err on the side of letting people um, testify if they've made an attempt to, to be here. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, 
And I think most of what I was thinking, you know, contacting the neighborhood groups, I think would be great. And I think we also need to let people know, maybe we just need to put it in bold. You know, you've got to please sign up ahead of time. Even, I don't think it needs to be a requirement, but I understand it would definitely help things um, move along. Um, and also maybe let people know they have to be able to be on video in order to testify. I don't know that that was in the, the flyer, but that might help with some folks who might be calling in from a phone or calling in from various places. And if they can get set up properly, that might that might help as well. Um, and I, I think we had about 19 people speak tonight. And one of the things I brought up in the hearing last week was it would be really great if we could keep track of where um, you know, where we're hearing from people so that we can identify if there are gaps. Um, and it sounds like we've got a lot of great written testimony so far, so that that's wonderful. But if, yeah, if there is a way to, and I see President Reed nodding his head, that would be great if there's a way for us to say, you know, we've heard a lot from this part of town, we need to hear from these folks over here, that that might help with some of our outreach as well. Um, yeah, and other, other than that, I just reiterate, I think the more, you know, if we can, I know the map's not final, but um, if people are able to see what's out there, at least, you know, they, they're going to be able to give better feedback um, as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Alderwoman Middlebrook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and voicing their opinion. Um, most of the ideas that I was thinking someone has already said, so thank you. All right, Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I want to echo the people that took the time to come out and get on this meeting. I know all of us have been doing the best we probably can with our social medias, with our word of mouth, with texting, all kinds of ways of sending out this information to um, make sure we get as many people on. I did get a lot of calls from people today that were saying they were going to listen in today and be prepared to make comments tomorrow. So that's good, which is, which is something that I was thinking about as well. But I do want to Make sure we also look at like the comments in the YouTube um, airing of this and even pay attention to some of the other comments, mainly because there's a lot of misinformation going around. I saw a lot of mis, um, misinformed PDFs, misinformed data charts going around today, and it was kind of not one to go back and forth with people. So I'm hoping that they were engaged in looking and getting the correct information, correct um, um ward districts all of those kind of things so that we can move forward collectively and be on the same page i do want to note that one of the main concerns i got and i heard it this evening as well is that um the perpetuation of the delmar divide and i want people to understand that the uh, argument of trying to keep neighborhoods together there's going to have to be a balance there if you want to keep neighborhoods together some of them then it is going to go down lines like delmar but if you want to work together collectively to try to break the Delmar divide, then we're gonna have to massage, I think is the word that's been used today, some of these boundaries. And so you'll have to give in on the uh, keeping the neighborhoods together, especially when you have people that wanna work um, together. So um, I think there were a lot of good comments made. I'm actually gonna go back and listen to them again. I was able to print out some of the other maps and make boundary things for some of my constituents that was on today that couldn't read the maps. And I think that's our responsibility, all of us. So. Thank you all for being on here. Um, be ready to answer questions, I'm sure, tonight and in the morning and be ready to get back on tomorrow, hopefully with even more feedback. Thank you. And before I go to the president and for some maybe potential closing remarks, I just want to say um, to all the uh, women of Barrow's co uh, comment about where people are coming from and testifying, that is one of the reasons why I require people to give at least their 100 blocks of where they live so that people kind of know. So we have for a record who's testifying from what areas of the city. So that was very enlightening. And certainly there may be a story in that and maybe a story tomorrow. But um, that is why I, as a chair, every chair may not do that, but I require that. And I know it's not something in the rule, but it's, it's the rule of the chair uh, because the chair is the one who regulates uh, and facilitates their meeting. So that was very helpful. So I'm glad you kind of pointed that out. Um, neighborhood groups, uh, if there's any older person that want to know all the neighborhood groups or associations that have been emailed, please contact Mary Goodman in the president's office. I spent a lot of time trying to gather that data and getting the input from my colleagues. And what I found was that that data was, as, as our woman um, Martin said, some of that data was not correct. But instead of me not emailing to the person that I didn't get from that older person. I left that person's email address in there and I just added it. Some, so some neighborhood groups probably got 
two or three or four or five emails, not that many, but four or five groups got emails to two different people um, because I wasn't sure on what may be accurate. Um, but again, if you want to know who we emailed it to in the spirit of, again, all transparency, please contact the president's office for that list. Uh, I did spend a lot of good uh, time on that. Um, as far as map streets, um, I, I think I heard that over and over again. So if there's a way that we can produce the maps with the alphabets and people can read the, the street divides on it, if you will, uh, that, that may be helpful. It may be helpful for tomorrow because uh, I project that tomorrow may be a uh, more even robust uh, hearing. Um, there's a difference between a town hall meeting and a public hearing. Legislatively, by law, we have hearings. And so we have hearings, there's not a lot of back and forth with the public ask us questions as a member of the committee and we're obligated to answer. But when we go out in our communities, one of the responsibilities that we have as, as members of the Board of Aldermen is we have town hall meetings, the mayor have town hall meetings. And that's when we really engage the community and create this public discourse whereby there's the back and forth. And boy, can that get out of, out of hand. But at the end of the day, the public do have a right to ask questions. But when we do public hearings, that's not necessarily so. We wish we could, but it, imagine if you will, all members of the Board of Aldermen, if we started that, we would not be able to get through to everybody who wanted just to give comments. So I just wanted to give a little bit of that commentary, especially the difference between town halls and hearings, because I feel the frustration from constituents when they want to ask questions and they want us to answer the questions. And then what we end up doing is engaging into debate. And that's why I always ask, um, I always let uh, people who testify, if there's an alderman that want to pick it up and ask, then they're free to do that. So with that, uh, Mr. President, if you want to close, uh, it's on you. Yeah, I would just like to thank um, uh, everyone who, who attended tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and all of the Alderman, but most especially thanks to all the residents. Um, at one point, I thought I saw just on this side of the wall upwards of 100 people. So when you, you know, when you take a look at what was on YouTube and other streaming sources, there are going to be a lot more. So I think that was good, and I think that was a you know some good engagement. Uh, we heard some good information come back, um, and. Uh, uh, this is again is you know taking steps through the process, um, and as you said in the opening, uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, through this process is just totally unprecedented. Um, and uh, you know, I just encourage the public to continue to stay engaged, uh, and you know, to the uh, to all the women from the twenty six talked about. Um, the idea of keeping neighborhoods together while at the same time uh, trying to really eliminate the Del Mar divide or make it make uh, some progress to uh, change the dynamics that happen around the Del Mar divide. Uh, one of the practical challenges is that neighborhood boundaries, the way they're currently drawn, they go right down Del Mar. So you have one neighborhood on one side and neighborhood on the other side. Um, and, you know, to the people who are still on, really want you to know that that's part of what we've been looking at in this map also. So a lot of the aldermen that, that are on this call uh, tonight, uh, even some that aren't part of the committee, uh, that's part of the things that they brought to the table that they wanted to also make sure that we begin to uh, change. So we're working through all those things. Uh, and again, if you have a apparatus to, to get information out to people, please get information out to people. It's gonna take all of us, not just the members of the board, not just myself. Uh, you know, I think about it, we have uh, the links and information everywhere we've been on, you know, I've been on radio, TV, uh, you, know, you know, various different internet portals. We've, we've got links posted on, you know, uh, websites and, and uh, you know, commercial and um, uh, uh, news outlets all over town. And we 
sending out hundreds of mailers to people and individuals, none of it will never be enough. We still, that's still not enough, right? Uh, so if there's anything that, that uh, you all can do through your Twitter accounts, through your Facebook accounts to post it and repost it, that'd be great. Uh, I've seen some of the aldermen really work to get the information out. Uh, you know, I don't want to call uh, some of them out, but I know I saw the other one from the 15th was really pushing information out to 26, uh, the 19th, uh, the 27th, uh, you know, and fourth. And some of these people really, uh, and the 28th have been really pushing this, this information out. And, you know, if you are on any of their streams and you get it, if you can repost it and push it, that'll help also. That'll just help us get more people involved and engaged. Uh, and the, the other thing is, um, if you ask a question, uh, it's not like that question is gonna be ignored. So we're taking that information in. If you saw me looking down, sometimes I was taking notes uh, uh, to make sure that we can respond to some of those questions that were asked. Um, so uh, understand that if you ask a question, but you don't feel like anyone answered you here tonight, uh, that question didn't fall on deaf ears, right? That question will be factored into the things that we're doing in terms of trying to get a representative map that will begin to address some of the structural issues within our city and lay a pathway to become a more unified city moving forward. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I thank you uh, for giving me the time to talk tonight. And again, thanks to absolutely everyone uh, that showed up and it spent their time uh, giving us um, feedback tonight. With that, Mr. President, thank you so much. And again, uh, with that, uh, we are adjourned. The Legislative Committee is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>